the mobile device, it is an extension of the customer. You know, they, they live in that thing. We live in that thing. No business is ever going to assume that their customer does not have access to a mobile device at this point, and the planning needs to be there for it. And that gentleman has been asking for a question. So, go ahead. Sorry, it's just very uh, topical to what you guys are talking about. I think with the trend of mobile, you're seeing everyone has access to information they're looking for at their fingertips. So I was curious as to, given some of your backgrounds, how you feel like that's evolving the self-service industry, because you guys are talking about loyalty and you know, the extension of it to your customers. So maybe you can talk to how you see the correlation to the advancement of mobile to the self-service industry towards for your customers. I think I mean, one of the most interesting areas of innovation when we think about sort of the edge apps on the edge of CRM is that when I move it to the mobile device, it's really beyond the typical CRM buyer's control of what's on it. For self-service users, it can be an app that I download. For a sales user, it can be an edge app that gives me coaching that I may be the, the only person in my department that has it. The same is true for that end user. They're going to be finding those edge apps that they download and a challenge for any service manager is being able to keep on top of all of those different apps that are that are coming in and being able to manage them in a way that's seamless for the customer. Uh, so uh, I'm editorial director of CRM Magazine, but I'm also the editorial director of Speech Technology Magazine, which uh, has its uh, sister conference going on right now. Uh, one of the exciting things there is exactly what you mentioned is the IVR companies don't want to be considered IVR companies anymore. They want to be considered customer experience companies. Hmm. And the people that build these IVR apps, we may hate them, but they know about customer experience. They know about customer engagement on the phone. They're very, very good at it. So what that community is trying to do is trying to figure out how do we get the voice user interface experts to work together with the graphical user interface app to create great customer service apps on the phone. And already we have, there are some companies that, that do that uh, and are figuring out how to merge IVR with the phone. Visual IVR is the term that they use. Companies like Radis Systems uh, are leading the way. Jakarta uh, is also another company that does that. Um, you're going to start to see <coughs> as, you know, you've got three different modalities on the on the smartphone, talk, touch, and type. Companies aren't doing a good job at using all of them. You know, they've gotten pretty good over the years at talk, but on the smartphone, they're still catching up with touch and type. And so they're gonna start to figure out when they get the graphical user interface experts together with the voice user interface experts, how to merge all those modalities and create better customer service. So that's happening now. Better self-service, but self-service with personalization. For example, uh, like Delta Airlines, if you get a text uh, about a um, missed flight or a canceled flight, and you call their, their, their contact center, the first thing you get is a, a personal message that says, are you calling about that, 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 that uh, text that we just sent you? So there's a tremendous amount of personalization that can go into being a, uh, uh, up-leveling uh, the, the customer experience. Um, and in terms of self-service, absolutely agree with you. All our data at Forrester shows that uh, customers want to self-serve as a first point of contact because it's an easy, effective way to get a quick answer to, to, to your question or an issue resolved. And it's a mode that values a customer's time. Most companies don't do a great job at delivering the right content in context and personalized to, to that customer and their situation. So, long way to go. Great. So, so, since, um, since we have some analysts on the on the panel today, we're seeing a lot of venture capital going into predictive sales analytics. Mm -hmm. Who's going to buy next? Is this a reality or is this, gonna, is this something that uh, may all, not happen? All that question so hey, you can. Well, actually, uh, what I wanted to mention has to do with that because, you know, what we're saying, Michael, uh, this is a channel, but it's still, you know, in the enterprise has to treat it as many channels because, you know, you know, we can go from chat, you know, we can go to, to you know, <coughs> voice, 
boy, if the enterprise ready for that, and the intent that I have while using the different application has to do a lot with you know data science, predictive intelligence, to, to be able to put that content in context. You know, while well, at the same time, you know, I think you know, even the call center or whoever's in the enterprise behind all of this, you know, they have to be ready for you. You know, and that might include self service. What happens to me a lot with American Airlines with the app, you know, I don't find what I need. You know, and I have to call them, and they have no idea that I'm in here. You know, <laughs> and and you know, comparing that with JetBlue, for example, you know, I travel all over Latin America. I mean, I can 